Welcome to the Entrepreneur Success Formula podcast, where we'll be getting down to earth with real entrepreneurs. You know, the ones who work hard and know that success is more than a mindset, because it takes blood, guts, and a bucket full of luck to survive and thrive in the world of business today. My name is Damien Mark Smith, and I am the author of the Entrepreneur Success Formula, How Thriving Business Owners Actually Do It. And I'm the host for today's show, because I'm going to be asking 10 quickfire questions to today's entrepreneurial guest. Who is Richard Harrington, the director at RSR Enterprises Limited, who has a bit of a history of working in the construction industry where safety is paramount. Uh, Richard is a safety consultant and he's proactive in ensuring that his client's health and safety requirements are met and that their contractors are working in a safe and compliant way. So Richard, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Damien. Good evening. <laughs> good evening, good morning, good day, good night. Everyone listens all over the world. Yes, yes. Hello uh, to everyone out there. Hello to everyone other. And, you know, I said a, bl- a bucket full of guts, a, no, bucket full of luck at the beginning and, you know, blood guts. But actually, this is what you try and avoid, isn't it, with your uh, with your clients? <laughs> Absolutely try to avoid all of the above, yes. Yeah, yeah. blood guts, thunder, you name it. Absolutely. Really don't want to see any of it. Definitely not. No, no blood allowed, please. So when did you start your business and, uh, you know, how did you get your first customer? Well, um, I, it's a it's a two stage story, Damien. Um, I'm going to go back to 2011 when I got um, disillusioned with the construction industry and um, uh, the large corporate infrastructure that was was there, and I couldn't do what I wanted to do in construction, which was build. And um, I was taken away to do progress reports budgets and, and everything else and I wanted to make sure that my client was getting a good end product and so I decided to leave and I set up a, a, a business in 2011 um, and um, yeah here I am um, in a slightly different business now today to 2011 but um, um, yeah that's where it was. How did you sort of kind of move into the health and safety side of it? Well, it was during this disillusionment, if that's such a word, um, that I thought to myself, well, what am I good at? And I'd always um, been quite reactive towards health and safety. I'd got a very good track record with clients, with the HSE. Um, My construction sites were... um, incident free one would like to say um, mm. so so um, I had a good record so I knew it and I understood it and people knew that I, I I knew it and understood it as well so it was it was just a natural place for me to go was into health and safety so typical opportunity uh, entrepreneurial opportunity it's like oh there's a bit of a gap in the market I can see there's some other people that aren't so health and safety conscious there could even be a business opportunity in this yes yes Fantastic. What has been in it? So, I'm going to kind of refer this specifically to your target, to your kind of industry. What has been the biggest mental challenge that you've had to overcome? And that can include kind of like dealing with sort of stories about, you know, disasters. And I mean, I, I heard one recently, which I'm not going to relay because it's a family show. Um, yes. Let's just say someone lost What's the, the biggest <laughs> disaster. Yeah. No, like the mental the challenges biggest... you've had to deal with, like, you know, in the job. Uh, the mental challenges for me it's always been about um there's right and wrong two sides to the coin um law abiding and law breaking and the construction industry is very highly regulated but you make more money the less of the regulations you comply to Mm -hmm. because speed is of the essence Someone wants to go in, earn their money, leave, and move on to the next project, and um, and that's where accidents tend to happen. Yeah. So um, the biggest challenge was changing mindsets of businesses out there, the the subcontract world, that actually doing it safely has its own benefits and its own rewards. Um, and you're more likely to get another carrot angled in front of you to go on to another contract um, if you do it slowly but surely, uh, efficiently and safely. So, what um, if you had to, if you, 
if you had to start all over again from scratch, what would be the first thing that you would do differently? Well, I just have started a, a brand new business. RSR is, is, is brand new um, in the last three months, last quarter. Mm-hmm. Um, and whereas when I started it before I came out of frustration, now I want to be in a place where everything is planned. I, I know now that in 2011, I hadn't dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's. And this time, um, I've decided that the way forward is to dot the I's, cross the T's, and um, don't go at it. I don't want to use the word reckless because that sounds the opposite of health and safety, but piling into it with bags of enthusiasm probably isn't the way to go. It's to have a, a clear definition of what you want to achieve. Okay, so, so I'll, I'll, swap, I'll swap the questions about it then because I think this would lead on nicely to the next one. So you're going to grow the business, but what is your market, what are you going to be your marketing tactics? Obviously, we, we belong to the same BNI group, so that's one networking. Yes, when, when, I, when I came into this, uh, again, it was very much, um, I, was, I was never anti-networking. I was anti the time of day that networking took place. So, and because of contractual reasons, I've, I've had to find a different way to market. And um, I, I was asked to join um, a networking group, BNI, and I found that there's such a diverse culture there that actually, why didn't I do it 10 years ago? Why not? And, and, and I'm, I'm using, I'm using the, what I'm picking up during that networking and I'm, I'm starting to, to think, hold on a moment, I've, I've got, I've already got networking groups out there, but I didn't realise that I had them. I've got my own networking groups. I've, uh, but it's joining that that regimented, um, multi-diverse group of people that's made me realise that actually no, that's a great place to go. That's a great place to go. Everything beforehand was word of mouth. Everything was, did I know them? Did they know me? And um, so it, that was an easy route in. Um, but now I'm having to find that um, marketing is important and, um, and, and networking is very important. Did you find before that when, when it was word of mouth, it was like almost like on a per job basis? It's like, we need someone for this thing. Oh, I know a person who'll be perfect for that. Um, initially, yes, probably that was, that was the case in, in probably half of them. Um, there's, um, people don't realize that they need health and safety on, on a, from a legal point of view, you know, from, from one man bands up to multi million pound internationals, everyone does need it. Yeah. So, um, and, and when, when you get that, for want of a better description, foot in the door, uh, and you and you point out what uh, what could be lost more than anything else because at the end of the day we're, we're very alike and again to an insurance policy so, um, uh, and it's the same with anything if you don't have that insurance policy there's a chance that you could lose a lot so so right. just getting your foot in the door there is is quite quite apt makes sense and i was you know here the, the the sound bit of advice on insurance is if, if if you can't afford what happens if you don't have it then you need insurance yeah <laughs> especially with this i think it's absolutely vital if you're in charge yeah. of uk construction business what health and safety legislation would you introduce you see now i've i've had a look at this um more in depth um, in the last week or so, construction health and safety is uh, what would I do? I would make training, education, um, super compulsory. I would make it that there's no no other stones to be turned. That everybody must be educated in health and safety, especially in the construction world. 
um, if, if people understand, and I find this from from when I give uh, teaching sessions, that uh, quite often you'll get people come in twiddling their thumbs, really don't want to be in a room. Yeah. I've got better things to do. I can earn money. And and by the end of the, the, the course, you can see that there's been a light bulb moment of, oh my, I, I realised that. That I didn't realise. And so they walk out with a, a different mentality to the, to the hopefully, the rest of their working world. So voluntold as I, I like to call them people who've been told to come along and partake in the workshop yes yeah yeah uh so just on that one have you been doing kind of online training through zoom in with the lockdown um i haven't done any online training no um not yet but it is out there to be had um i would love to get into that um uh i've had some one-to-one -one discussions with with various different people but no um as i'd like to sit down and have a classroom kind of um scenario and and uh, not not yet no okay um right richard what's your favorite business book and why well um i'm not a great reader of books i must admit so when um when I knew that I was coming into the podcast, Damien, and I did have actually have a look around and say, what book would I like to read? Um, and I've had a look and I've, I've made a note, okay? So I'm gonna say, and I don't know if this is easy pickings, but the number one book out there apparently is How to Win Friends and Influence. Yep. And that, uh, written by um, Dale Carnage, is that? Carnage. Um, in Carnegie, yes, that's um, excuse <laughs> my. Um, he's um, that sounds like a fascinating book, and again, reflecting on the networking of how to influence people you probably already know. So um, that, but also recommended to me was our iceberg is melting, which again I've I've had a look at and thought, Do you know what, yeah. Um, it's about dealing with change and, and I guess as, a, as an entrepreneur you are changing from one thing into another and, um, and that book becomes very very relevant and um, so yeah that, they're, they're the two books that I've actually st stuck in my, my basket to, uh, to purchase and read. Fantastic I'm gonna to listen to that well, we'll listen, well I do audio books but uh, I might yes me too yeah, I might even buy that to take away to uh, to Crete when we can finally get out there. Um, what <laughs> what is your morning routine? My morning routine is um, ooh, I'm going to go historic a little bit here um, to bring you up to date. I've spent uh, in the construction world. I was always expected to be the first man on site, so no awesome. matter where I was, so I was quite often up with the. Uh, with the early birds and uh, always on site by about seven o'clock in the morning which if I had an hour and a half travel meant I had to get up super early and I spent six years at sea as a fisherman where there's no such thing as time so my early mornings um, when I got the opportunity I chose I don't like early mornings so I don't get up early I, my, my, my mornings are generally get up slowly um, do the, the usual bathroom runs and breakfast, come down, read my emails generally first before I start my day, um, which is, is generally now office based uh, at the moment, but um, looking to get out there and, and uh, pass on the word, so to speak. Fantastic. What do you think your business and construction and health and safety will look like in 50 years from now? Um, I'm hoping that in the next 50 years uh, we can educate the up and coming generation in health and safety um, and driving serious accident rates down. Um, in, in the years that I've been involved, the 25 odd years I've been involved in kind of health and safety in, in the construction industry. Um, the, the number of fatalities has halved in 25 years. Yeah. So 70, 80 deaths down to 34 deaths, depending on the year. 
So in 50 years time, I, I genuinely, genuinely hope that we can eradicate any death scenes. That would be where I would love it to be. I, my motivation to, to pass on the knowledge is that people go home in the evening after doing a day's work exactly the same way that they turned up. Maybe a little bit hungrier, a little bit dirtier, but at the end of the day, they go home to their family. And that to me, if I can help achieve that, that's my reward. That is well, genuinely good. my reward. That's good. Well, on that basis, if uh, what is your favourite business entrepreneurial movie and why? And if they made a movie about you and your business, and just thinking 50 years from today, if they made a legacy movie, who would play the starring role? Obviously, it has to be an actor today, because obviously... We want to <laughs> yes, I was going to... We don't know who they're going to be. You see, there's going to be a great actor born in 25 years' time who's going to play that, but... Uh, Let's just say I've... the son of somebody. <laughs> <Yes. like that. laughs> I've been... Uh, uh, I've again. I've I've been reminded about lots of phones um, uh, films that, that 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 take on board this world of entrepreneur and risky business is one that that, that dumped out at me. Wall Street is another, um, and and even Nine to Five with with the fantastic Holly Parlin. Um Rocky, great inspirational film. Rocky as well, um, but for me, it's always been one that sits in my mind is Working Girl. Someone that has um, very, very low down in the ranks, low esteem, and just decided, do you know what, I, I can be somebody. Grasped an opportunity, took it forward, everything against her, and guess what, came out on top. Fantastic. fantastic. Great movie, fantastic. Go on, who's gonna be the son of the, who, who's the actor who's gonna have a son? He's going to play you in 50 years. Who is Matt it? Damon. Matt Damon. <laughs> there we go. Matt Damon. Fantastic. Superb. Yes. Okay. And finally, what are your plans for expansion or exit? Well, um, expansion. Uh, I'm going to be content now, I think, with just ticking along. I think I'm always going to work. I'm always going to work. But when I do, um, I would like to retire um, five years time, maybe, and um, and get out, retire to a small island off, I don't know, Isle of Wight, maybe, and um, and just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. get back on the boat. <laughs> yeah, Isle of Man, somewhere like that. Isle, Isle of Dogs. Um, no, just 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 to retire go away, be, be quite self-sufficient, I think. And that's, that's my plan. Five, five years. Um, Love it. That's, that's the plan. Superb. And then just like one last thing, one extra little question. Where do you think Arsenal are going to come this year? <laughs> in the table. In, in, in 1920, the season 1920, I think they're going to finish in sixth place. Man City's ban will be upheld and we will miss it by one. Okay. Well, I think we're going to finish in fifth. So there you go. I'm, I'm going for it. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, Stick a horse on it. Let <laughs> <laughs> it home. Yeah. So, uh, yes, in the strange year that was 2020, when they'll look back and they'll say, oh, that was the year when most of the students didn't get any uh, education and where, you know, football was up the spout and all the all the fantastic sporting events then like backlogged into 2021, which was the best sporting year of all time. Yes. Yeah. When we'll Arsenal, yes. When Arsenal finally won the Premier League again. Exactly. I don't know about that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see. Um, but I, th I actually think England's got a good chance in the Euros. Um, and you heard it here first. There you go. I did. I did. <laughs> brilliant richard thank you so much for uh, taking part in today's show if our listeners want to get in touch with you what uh, where do they go um well uh, there's there's a uh, an email address uh, do you want me to shout that out now yeah yeah it's rjh at rsr enterprises limited and that's ltd.co.uk fantastic 
That's great. Thank you, Richard. Thank you so much for taking this brief delve into the real lives of real entrepreneurs. And can I just ask that anyone listening to this podcast who knows anyone who's interested in either becoming an entrepreneur or has a business and works hard um, and would like to have this brief delve, brief delve into entrepreneurship and what it's like to actually run a business, uh, please like us on iTunes and comment on YouTube if you can as we're on both and hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to take a part into the, in this show, or if you know someone who would love to take part in the show, simply drop me an email. That's Damien at RethinkingBusiness.biz. That's Damien with an A at RethinkingBusiness.biz. And we can have a chat. Richard, here's to your success and see everyone soon. Thanks very much, Damien.